Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. We finished Chapter 3, but I want to talk now about the problems at the end of Chapter 3. And I also want to go back to that example I discussed in the last lecture and say a few extra words about it. So I ended with this picture of the phase portrait for that example. I just want to mention uh, a, a couple of things. There are three equilibria. They're all on the y-axis, but the only one that's stable, in fact asymptotically stable, is this equilibria. Now, when I teach this, a lot of students all, often, not a lot, but some, argue about this equilibrium point here. And they say, okay, well, it's stable from one side, but not the other. Yes, but remember, the definition of stability is that it's stable for an entire neighborhood. That if we take a neighborhood of the trajectory, the equilibrium point in this case, we start in the neighborhood, we stay in it forever, Lyapunov stability, and we start in it, we stay in it forever, and we approach the fixed point, equilibrium point as time goes to infinity. That's not true unless if we just consider a partial neighborhood for this particular equilibrium point. So stability is true I mean, is true for an entire neighborhood. The definition is for an entire neighborhood. Okay. And we see that there are two heteroclinic orbits or heteroclinic connections the trajectory connecting the origin to y equal 1, x equals 0, y equal 1, and x equals 0, y equal minus 1, also the origin. So I just wanted to mention those. Now let's look at the problems. All right, you saw this example. We talked about this example already. Now what I want you to do is use the language and definitions that I've developed to say much more about it. Talk about stability, uh, the nature of stability, homoclinic and heteroclinic orbits, and then give a try at analytically computing the solutions. And you should be able to do that. You're going to get solutions in the different regions where you avoid dividing by zero in the expression for x of t. Okay, computationally, this is a little bit involved, this problem, but I think you'll learn quite a bit from it. All right, problem two is something I mentioned last time, that an invariant set has the property that if you start in it, you stay in it. You can't get out, but also you can't get in either. If you start outside, there's no way you're going to get into that invariant set in finite time. You may get closer and closer and closer as time goes to infinity, but you're never going to get in that invariant set. Okay, this exercise, exercise two, is about proving that. Finally, exercise three is very much the same as the example from the last lecture. We have a two-dimensional autonomous system. You've already seen the first component. And you saw this one in the last example, but in the x component, now you see exactly the same thing in the y component. And I'm asking you to determine the zero-dimensional, one-dimensional, and two-dimensional invariant sets, attracting sets in their basin of attraction, heteroclinic orbits. Does the vector field have any periodic orbits? Well, this is a this is this is a problem I really like because you can use an, an example I had previously. Uh, I talked about this in the in the last chapter, but if the vector field is going to be periodic, it has to be periodic in time in each component. Okay, so if it fails in one component, it can't have periodic orbits. Well, just look at this one. And then sketch the phase portrait. Now, I realize that there's one thing I have not mentioned that should maybe is intuitively clear, but it's good to clear it up at this stage. The notion of dimensionality. 
Dimension of the phase space, yes. But what do I mean by zero dimensional, one dimensional, two dimensional? In, in, in general, the dimension of a set is the number of independent coordinates required to describe a typical point in that set. Now, dimension theory is a big theory in its own right in mathematics, but that's this the essentially the intuitive notions are all that we're going to need in this course. Okay, so have a go at these problems. I think you'll get a lot out of them. And in the next lecture, we're going to talk about linearization, a big topic. Okay, so bye for now.